There are so many fun, cool, unique Super Mario Brother games that I thought it'd be fun to maybe break down and rank my top five most underrated. These are just my top five. Let me know what your top five are in the comments below. Let's go! Five. Wrecking Crew, released on July 26, 1984, Wrecking Crew is a simplistic game. This time player one plays as Mario, and player two, if there was one, would be Luigi. The goal is to destroy objects with a hammer, taking some cues from Donkey Kong and some from Cement Factory. Wrecking Crew always reminded me of Wreck-It Ralph. The game features a new antagonist named Spike, a construction foreman who chases Mario around each level with the attempt to disrupt him. The game is over when all lives are lost. You can also stop playing the game anytime and it has to be stopped. You have to, you have no choice but to stop it when Mario gets trapped, if Mario gets trapped in a barrel. Four, Mario is missing. Okay, it's educational, whatever. This game has Mario and he goes missing. It's up to his brother Luigi to rescue him and travel around the world to do so, you know, kind of like Carmen San Diego. Mario is Missing marked the first time Luigi was the main character. The game was released on computers and the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. It was a point and click style game and lacked the side scrolling controls of the previous Mario games. It took me a little while to get into this as a kid. I had it for the MS DOS and I remember being disappointed that it was educational when it came out. But over time, I ended up learning to love it and I really enjoyed this game. Mario is Missing was released for MS DOS on January 1993. Three. Super Mario Sunshine. Is it underrated? In my eyes, it is. I remember when it was released and people were very much disappointed. This game was released in North America on August 26, 2002. I had the giant standee from Toys R Us in my college dorm room for an entire year because Mario rocks and everyone loves Mario. Mario Sunshine was released on GameCube. This game was more or less a sequel to Mario 64, seeing Mario, Princess Peach, and some Toads depart for a much needed vacation. The object of the game was to collect 120 Shine Sprites from the island of Delfino. Bowser Jr. frames Mario and the inhabitants do not trust him. Professor Agad from Luigi's Mansion makes his return and provides Mario with Flood Flash liquidizing ultra dousing device which uses the power of water to clean away goop and help Mario reach new places. You can spray it and you can float around with it. Yoshi makes an appearance and slinging fruit around is always fun. The game is bright, filled with funky music, but I found the controllers smoother than Mario 64 and the game was just a joy to get through. While the game has been praised by many, when it was released, like I said, not too many were fond of Flood. Two. Super Mario Land 2, six golden coins. I remember the trailers for this when it was first released vividly. This was our first time learning about Wario, who I thought was actually kind of lazy at the time. Little did I know 30 years later, he would be a mainstay in the Mario universe. Super Mario Land was a fun Game Boy game, but an underwhelming Mario game. It, it lacked the joy and smoothness of a traditional NES Mario game, but the six golden coins rectified that this game is a blast. I think it's overlooked by a lot of people. Maybe not so much. The rabbit ears are fantastic. Wario shows up. The object of this game is for Mario to reclaim his personal island from the evil, greedy Wario. The game itself is about five steps up from Super Mario Land. It is triumphant. It is a joy. It really feels like it belongs in the Mario world. You can now play it on the Nintendo Switch on the virtual Game Boy console. It is a blast. I highly recommend you play Super Mario Land 2. Even if you didn't like Super Mario Land 1, play Super Mario Land 2. And number one, Super Mario 3D Land released on Nintendo 3DS. Super Mario 3D Land got a pseudo sequel with 3D World, but there was a charm to 3D Land. The game utilized the 3D capabilities of the 3DS like no other, taking Mario on a fun-filled retro-inspired game. It felt like a successor to Mario World, Mario Bros. Wii and New Mario Bros. clearly did as well. This game, however, combined the 2D with 3D elements, taking this game back to Mario 3 and Mario World, where Mario games were the games to showcase the new consoles. Super Mario 3D Land was released in North America on November 13th, 2011. You play as Mario in the game, however, when you complete it, you get the opportunity to play as Luigi, creating hours and hours of fun. And there you have it, my top five. Super Mario underrated games. Let me know what yours are in the comments down below. It's always fun. I love them all. There are so many Mario games. It's unbelievable. Thanks for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, may you be the master of your own universe.